Hey guys, welcome back to the final episode of this Pokédex playlist. In this last playlist, we will set up these bars here for the base stats. You can see these come with, a, with an animation here, and that animation is also a little bit delayed, so we just add a little bit more delay from each bar to each bar, and that is what we want to do in this video. That is actually not that difficult with Compose. Um, so essentially, these bars will just be a box inside of a box. So we have this gray box here and we have this yellow box, for example, for this HP bar. And then we will just have a value that we will animate from zero to whatever percent this value here for that base stat um, is from the from the max amount. So we will always determine, okay, what is the the max stat here that will always have 100%. So you can see that it's a special attack here for Venusaur. So with that maximum stat, we will then evaluate the other stats in proportion to that. So here in our Pokemon in detailed screen, we want to scroll down and we will have a composable function called Pokemon stat. And this will take a bunch of parameters. On the one hand, the stat name, which is a string, which will be HP, for example. Then we have the stat value, which is an integer, so that will be ju just the value of that stat. We have the stat max value, so also an integer, as I said, that will be the maximum value here from all of our values, so we can just determine how wide our box should actually be. We have a stat color. We have a stat height, let's actually just call it height here, and I'll default it to 20 ATP. And then we will have two values for our animation. On the one hand, our animation, let's call it anim duration, which is a long, actually an integer, and I'll set that to a thousand milliseconds. So we animate each bar for one second, and we have anim delay, which we set to zero initially, so just how many milliseconds we want to delay that animation. And now if you watched my Compose Basics playlist, then you know how we can make basic animations. This is a very basic animation here, so essentially what we will have is, we will have a float value, a percentage value, that we will animate from zero to the final value, whatever percent that is. And for that, we will use the so-called animate as uh, animate state as float function. Um, so val current percent, which well corresponds to the current percent amount of our box from the from the total width, and that is equal to animate state or animate float as state. It is actually. And here we can now assign a target value, and whenever target value. And whenever this target value basically changes, it is not directly changed, instead it's smoothly animated towards the new value. And to actually trigger this animation when we compose this uh, Pokemon stat composable, we want to have a state, a val animation plate, that is just a state that represents if the animation was already played or not. We can also use by remember. Mutable state of and false. So initially the animation is not played and I think we need to add an import here. Yes. Scroll to the top, go to import and wherever our remember function is, um, is it that? I think we need to just swap it out with an asterisk then uh, scroll back down. Yeah, now the error is gone. And then we can check if this animation is played, we want to animate that zero, so else we have zero if we if that animation was not played, which is the starting value. But if the animation is played, if we toggle this boolean, we want to animate this zero percent to stat value divided by stat max value dot to float. So basically what this means is okay, we start at zero because our animation is not played initially, but 
we will actually set this to true right when we compose this Pokemon stat composable, then since this state changes, it will also change this target value from zero to stat value divided by stat max value, which is the exact final percentage amount. And then this animate floater state function will animate the zero towards this value here smoothly. And to also pass our other values here for that animation, we can pass what is called an animation spec. We can pass a tween here, and that gives us the options to pass a duration, which is our anim duration. And for the delay, we can pass anim delay, like this. And now to trigger this animation, we will use a launched effect block here. I'm actually not sure if this is really needed because we're only dealing with compose state here um, and this actually must be a var so we can change it but i will s use this launch effect block which will just make sure that we only set this um, this value animation as play animation plate to true once after a successful composition and with this key equal to true we just make sure that this launched effect block doesn't fire off again. So usually when we pass a key here, this will be called whenever this key changes, but if we pass just a constant value of true here, then this won't change, of course. So we can set animation play to true in here, and then we will create our actual box. So that first of all will be the outer box. So the gray one, which contains the inner colorful box, we set the modifier of that box to modifier dot fill max width. Oops. Dot height. We set it to our height we passed. We set clip to a circle shape. So we just have round corners. And the background, we will make that depending on if our device is in dark mode or light mode. Um, I don't have a constant for that in our themes folder. Instead, what I will do is I will check if is system in dark theme. Oops, if it is, we want to use a color of 0xff505050, which is a dark gray, as you can see. And else, if it's not in dark theme, we choose color dot light gray. And then inside of that box, we will have a row. Actually, I said it was a box, but it's a row um, because, well, the row is the container, and then we can just pl uh, place these, the stat name and the stat value inside of that row. We set horizontal arrangement to space between, which will just push these entries here um, to the very left and to the very right. We set the vertical alignment to center vertically. We set the modifier to modifier fill max height. So it will fill the max height of our parent box. And fill max width. And here we can now pass a fraction how much of the maximum width we want to fill. And that is exactly our current percent dot value and whenever uh, that current percent dot value changes which will change quite frequently whenever this animation value here is updated then also our row will recompose and change its width we also clip it to a circle shape we also give it a background of the stat color and i want to add a little of a little bit of horizontal padding of atp and in here, we just have two texts. On the on the left hand, we have a text about the stat name. So text is equal to stat name, which is the abbreviated stat name with a font weight of bold. And that is already it. We can copy this text. This one will be our current percent dot value multiplied by our stat max value. 
So since that is our maximum value and we multiply it with the current percent, we can actually get the final value we animate towards. So dot to integer actually to just round it and to string. And that is it for our Pokemon base stat. Let's write our uh, second composable here, which is our Pokemon base stats all together. That will take the Pokemon info on the one hand of type Pokemon because that info contains the other stats the Pokemon has. And I will add an animation delay per item, which I'll set to 100 milliseconds. So we just delay each item by 100 milliseconds more. Then we first want to get the maximum base stat of that Pokemon. So val max base stat, max base stat is equal to remember and we want to use Pokemon info dot stats. You can see that is a list of stats dot max off. So we're going to pick the stat with the maximum amount of um, base stat. And then we will save that here in this variable. We use the remember block here because we don't want to call this maximum off function on every recomposition. Then we will have a column here for just all of our base stats. Um, I want to make sure that we fill the whole width with that column um, for max width. And in that column, we first have a text setting base stats here, and then all of our base stats. So a text base stats. Set the font size to 20 SP. And I want to set the color of that text to material theme colors on surface to make sure that we change the text color for dark mode. Then I want to add a little space here. So spacer with modifier height of just 40p. And then we can now loop over the list of stats for that Pokemon. And for each stat, we just display the corresponding stat color, that, that stat row we have, that bar. So for I in Pokemon info that stats that indices. So we just loop over the indices of those stats. We can get the current stat using Pokemon info that stats at the index of I. I. <laughs> um, and then we use a Pokemon stat composable we just created. Can I put that into different lines? Looks like I can't. Oh, no, okay. Um, the stat name is the function I pasted in the previous video, I think, which is parse stat to abbreviation. So we just get the stat name from the API and press it to the abbreviated stat. Here we just pass our stat. The stat value is stat dot base stat. Then we have the stat maximum value, which is max base stat. The stat color is also equal to our parse stat to color function, passing our stat. And finally, I want to set the animation delay to i times anim delay per item. So that means because i starts at zero, the first item won't have delay. The second item will have one time, and one times 100 milliseconds, so it will have 100 milliseconds delay. The third item will have 200 milliseconds delay and so on. And then just adding a little bit of space between each item. So modifier that height of ATP. And that is it for this Pokemon base stats. If we now scroll up to where we have that Pokemon detail section, so the container around everything. Here below our data section, we then want to have the Pokemon base stats passing the Pokemon info. And that is actually it. Let's now launch the app, check the emulator, check a Pokemon, and yes, seems like it's working. The animation works. 
Taking a different Pokemon. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So then, that is it actually for this playlist. Thank you for watching this far. Um, one more thing actually. Someone wrote in a previous video, commented about our Pokemon list screen. Um, wherever we paginate here, this line. I personally am not too sure to be honest about this because I think this can be considered a side effect because let, in the end this load Pokemon paginated function is not a function by Compose and we call that here directly now Compose code without a callback or so. But to be honest, at the moment, I'm not quite sure how we should handle these types of things. I researched a lot about these side effects and sure, we can do, we can wrap that around a launch defect block here. Also passing true, this will work. Um, maybe we can do that. That just looks a little bit cleaner maybe because it's a side effect. But in the end, with this condition here, we already made sure that this really only gets called when it should get called. But there is just not enough information about Compose out yet to really understand the internals and how we could handle, how we should handle these types of things here. Um, I've also realized when I made that playlist here, when I already recorded, uh, that there is also a paging library for Compose. Maybe that would have been better. I didn't know that when I recorded this. I recorded this quite early. Maybe that paging library existed then. I just haven't heard of that. So maybe using that would have been better here. I have researched about paging and Compose and I have found this approach. So yeah, this is really <laughs> the only place in this project where I'm not too sure if this is the absolute best approach. It works, of course. Um, uh, but maybe in future projects I will handle this differently. Anyways, thank you for watching this far in this playlist. Thank you for your time, thank you for your support and I will be very glad to also welcome you in my next playlist. So see you then, have an awesome day, bye bye.